Hey everybody, this is Geneva of Geneva's Closet Talk Show. Please make sure you like and share this video and subscribe to Geneva's Closet if you haven't already done so right here on YouTube. And you can follow me on Facebook at what? At Geneva's Closet. And you can email me at Geneva's Closet 22 at gmail.com. Now, let's get into the news. Did you know that Taraji P. Henson is related to Matthew Henson, which is one of the men who founded the North Pole? I actually found this information out a few years ago, I was doing some research, and I shared it on my Facebook page at Geneva's Closet. But I was thinking the other day, and I said, I don't know if I gave this information to my YouTube people. Now, when I first found this out, I was totally interested because in school, in elementary school, I remember us having to do school projects on explorers and i remember in my classroom seeing pictures of different explorers and i remember seeing the only black man explore and him having this eskimo coat on like i vividly remember that so when i seen his picture i knew exactly who he was so let's go over who matthew henson is just in case you don't know Matthew Alexander Henson was born on August 8, 1866 on his parents' farm east of the Potomac River in Charles County, Maryland to sharecroppers who had been free people of color before the American Civil War. To escape from racial violence in Southern Maryland, in 1867, the Henson family sold the farm and moved to Georgetown, still an independent town, part of Maryland and adjacent to the national capital. He had an older sister, S, born in 1864 and two young younger sisters, Eliza and S. Matthew's mother died when Matthew was seven, and Father Lumo, if I'm saying that correctly, remarried to a woman named Caroline and had additional children with her, including daughters and a son. After his father died, Matthew was sent to live with his uncle who lived in Washington, D.C. Georgetown was made part of the Washington, D.C. in 1871. The uncle paid for a few years of education for Matthew, but soon died. Henson attended a public black school for the next six years, during last of which he took summer jobs, washing dishes in a restaurant. At the age of 12, the youth made his way to Baltimore, Maryland, a busy port. He went to sea as a cabin boy on the merchant ship Katie Hines, traveling to ports in China, Japan, Africa, and the Russian Arctic Seas. The ship's leader, Captain Charles, took Henson under his wing and taught him to read and write. In 1887, while working at a Washington, D.C. clothing store, Henson met Commander Robert E. Perry. Learning of Henson's sea experience, Perry recruited him as an aide for his planned voyage and surveying expedition with four other men. Perry supervised 45 engineers on the canal survey, impressed with Henson's seamanship. On that voyage, Perry recruited him as a colleague and he became the first man in his expeditions. After that, for more than 20 years, their expeditions were to the Arctic. Henson traded with the Inuit and mastered their language. He was remembered as the only non-Inuit who became skilled in driving the dog sleds and in training dog teams in the Inuit way. He was a skilled craftsman, often coming up with solutions for what the team needed in the harsh Arctic conditions. They learned to build igloos out of snow for mobile housing as they traveled. His and Perry's team covered thousands of miles in dog sleds and reached the furthest north point of any Arctic expedition until 1909. In 1908-09, Perry mounted his eighth attempt to reach the North Pole. The expedition was large as Perry planned to use his system of setting up supplies along the way. When he and Henson boarded his ship in Roosevelt, the ship Roosevelt, leaving Greenland on August 18th, 1909, they were accompanied by a whole lot of other people. Perry selected Henson and four Inuits as part of the team of six men who would make the final run to the North Pole. Before the goal was reached, 
Perry could no longer continue on foot and rode in a dog sled. Various accounts say he was ill, exhausted, or it had frozen toes. He sent Henson ahead as a scout. This is what was in the newspaper. I was in the lead that had overshot the mark a couple of miles. We went back then and I could see that my footprints were the first at the spot. Henson proceeded to plant the American flag. The claim by Perry's team to have reached the North Pole was widely debated in newspapers at the time, as was the competing claim by Frederick Cook, the National Geographic Society, as well as the Naval Affairs of the U.S. House of Representatives, both credited Perry's team with having reached the North Pole. Others remain doubtful. A reassessment of Perry's notebook by British polar explorer Wally Herbert in 1988 found it lacking in essential data, thus renewing doubts about Perry's claim. So now since we have the history on Matthew Henson, now let's talk about this whole family thing. So basically when Henson and Perry were in the North Pole, they were sleeping with the women there. Now Perry was already married and I think he had a child, um, but he was still sleeping with the women there and the same thing that was going on with Henson. Perry, a man in his 40s with a U.S. wife and daughter at home had a relationship with a younger Inuit woman who bore him two sons one of whom died young, and the Maryland sharecropper, sharecropper's son, Mr. Henson, also married without children, had an Inuit uh, mistress as well. Their son was born in 1906, as was Perry's surviving son, was born in 1906. But after the Americans left in September 1909, never to return or communicate with the Greenlanders, their Inuit families fell into destitution. Many years later, Kayla, who died in 1998, recalled wearing dogskin clothes as a boy badge of poverty. Now, Kayla is Perry's son that they left behind. So basically, they had children, and in 1909, they left left they didn't come back to see the children they didn't communicate they were just done so matthew henson's son and i know i'm not going to say this right so i'm just going to call him anna matthew henson's son anna um he had five sons which all survived and he died in 1986 without ever meeting his dad so that's just crazy that there's black eskimos out there because of the whole Matthew Henson and probably whoever else that was black that was out there. But I just found that to be really interesting. So now we're going to get into how is Taraji P. Henson related to Matthew Henson? Well, remember at the beginning of all of this, when I was reading, giving you a little backstory on Matthew Henson. Matter of fact, let's just go into it. It says... Matthew Henson, explorer who founded the North Pole, was born in 1866. Matthew had three sisters by his mom and dad. And then remember I told you that his mother died at the age of two. His mom dies. And then Matthew's father, Lumio, if I'm saying that correctly, remarried and had more children, which included another son named Joseph Henson, which is now supposed to be Matthew's half-brother, other brother. So, Joseph Henson, Matthew's brother that his father had with another woman, he had a son, and his son's name was James Henson. And then James Henson eventually had a son, and his son was named Russell H. Henson. And then Russell eventually had a son, and his son's name is Boris Lawrence Henson. Boris eventually had a daughter, and her name is... Taraji P. Henson. Taraji's father passed away in 2006. And that is how Taraji P. Henson is related to Matthew Henson. It is not directly through Matthew Henson's line because he only had one child with the Inuit woman in the North Pole, Greenland. It is from his half-brother who his father had with another woman that Taraji P. Henson's father was born, who then had her. So, he is Matthew Henson. He is Taraji P. Henson's great, great, great grand uncle, basically, for the most part. Whew, oh my God, that was a lot. That was definitely a lot of research for that one. So all the pictures that you see are descendants of Matthew Henson's, which means 
that these are cousins, and I don't even know how far down the line, the first cousin, second, I don't know. But these are descendants of Matthew Henson's, which would make them family members, and I think cousins of Taraji P. Henson's. So tell me what you think about this information, people. I found it to be pretty interesting. What did you think? And while you're letting me know that, could you please like and share this video and subscribe to Geneva's Closet if you haven't already done so right here on YouTube. And you can follow me on Facebook at what? at Geneva's Closet, and you can email me at genevascloset22 at gmail.com. You all have a fabulous day, and I will talk to you later. Bye.